Hello, this is Storybooks channel. New videos are posted every day, subscribe and click the bell. There was a sense of celebration in the house. It was because Emily was about to become a mother. But at the moment she was in the maternity ward, and Camille was looking after all this beauty. Camille would show up around the house and click her tongue. She had never imagined that her son-in-law would be so calculating an offer to renovate the nursery himself. And no one had pulled his tongue. It was a personal initiative. At the same time, before that he had not even thought of starting the repair. And naturally, the mother-in-law had vague suspicions. She was somehow wary of the generosity of her son-in-law. He avoided extra money, considering it a waste. But in this case, he made an exception, and even it seems, went wild. To the fullest, using the services of professional designers. Her daughter wanted a modest interior, but Michael insisted on his version, and it was accepted as it came to his liking. And even pleased the eye with beautiful decoration. Camille sat down and sighed with relief and said to herself, Now you can live for yourself. The daughter is in good hands. Consider that life is successful. And just at that time, she received a call. And the third one today, I shook my head. She pressed the call button and answered. Yes, my dear, and I'm listening. Michael's mom hasn't arrived yet, sounded her question with anxiety in her voice. Not yet, but I think it will be soon. What's wrong? Are you scared of something? I think I'm going into labor today. I'm having contractions. Daughter, calm down. I'll soon Camille got up from the table and started packing. Don't. Mom, no one will let you come to me anyway, protested Emily. I'll wait on the bench in the yard. No one will kick me out of there. How can you miss such a moment? It's better to stay at home. If Michael comes back from his business trip, you'll come with him. While I'm waiting for my son-in-law, my grandson will be born without me. That's the thing you care. And Michael just left. Emily cried. He knew I was going to have a baby soon. He didn't stay. His job's so expensive. He can't help it if Camille calms his daughter down. It's mom. I can't talk anymore. The contractions started again. And I realized, my good girl, have an easy labor. She shouted the last words just as Emily actually turned off the phone. Whether her daughter heard them or not, Camille began to pack and put the most necessary things in her bag. Looking at her watch and figuring the last time she called her son-in-law, she dialed his number again. But he answered me. And there was anxiety on my soul, and with it the alarm bell rang. True, there was no time to compare facts and draw any conclusions. Her daughter was probably already taken to the delivery room, and she could not afford to leave her without support. At the same time, a successful delivery took time and it was not worth waiting until the evening for the baby to appear. And to Camille decided to go because her heart was not in the right place. She was so much worried about her daughter that she could lie next to her in the delivery room. She had all kinds of thoughts going through her head. What if the labor dragged on, would she be able to bear it? Emily was about to become a mother for the first time. And naturally, she felt emotional stress. But a mother in this situation would not be able to help her. Well, except morally, in principal relatives and friends were allowed to be present at the birth and could stand beside her. Emily would have felt even more attention and care, but they had not discussed this moment beforehand. And now she did not make such a responsible decision on the fly. Calling a cab an hour later, Camille went down to the entrance. We had to wait only five minutes before a black foreign car arrived. Behind the wheel sat a man of 35 years old and with a beard, in the back seat, she said hello to him and pronounced, If it's all right with you, can you give me a little more gas? I urgently need to go to the maternity hospital, and I will pay more than the standard rate. Are you going to express? The driver asked in surprise, although it was obvious that he wanted to support the conversation in a joking way. Yes, right here, without leaving the cash register. It's past my time, I'm going to my daughter, she's in labor. And don't ask any more stupid questions. Or I'll tell you so much, you won't be happy. I'm sorry, I made a bad joke. I'll see you tonight. Don't be nervous. Another thing is a joker. But on the whole it's not a bad idea, and I'll think about it at my leisure. I have a daughter, but never had a son. That's what I mean. The driver nodded, I'm putting on more gas. And you say time has passed. 
Women have babies even later in life, so it's not surprising. Thanks for the kind word. I'll keep it in mind. She thanked him for such a generous compliment. In fact, he and her person elevated all women to heaven and made her realize that age is not a hindrance. For the continuation of the species would be the desire to become a mother, and nature itself will try. And if everything is normal, a healthy and beautiful child will definitely be born. In addition, statistics show that it was much easier and simpler for mature women to give birth. By that time they knew exactly what to expect from further life, and were not afraid to bring up a child, at least of that very fear. During the first labor was no longer there. In the maternity hospital, such women felt calm and did not worry about trifles, humbly waiting for the baby to appear. Camille only thought about it for a moment and immediately herself twitched. Her own pregnancy was not part of her plans, especially three years ago she had buried her husband. And for the time being, she was not going to tie herself with new grim ties in the near future. Among those men who came her way, she did not see a worthy candidate. Most of them were leftist and perpetually dissatisfied with their lives. They had constant doubts about their own prospects. And Camille realized that from such a contingent we will not make a good one. That's why she decided to live for herself and her beloved daughter. Meanwhile, the cab driver increased the gas. And soon there was a building of a maternity hospital. The roof and windows glowed in the bright sunlight, as if huge spotlights had been directed at them on purpose. Camille squinted, trying to see his daughter in one of them. But all of them, as it turned out, were obscured by half-transparent curtains. Slowed down at the entrance, the driver turned to her and said cheerfully, as promised, with a breeze. Thank you. I noticed that. She answered him excitedly and gave him the fare. Can you keep the change? The service is not bad. The jokes are not very good. But on the whole, it's fine. That's what I understand clear and to the point your daughter's successful labor and all the best. Nodding goodbye, Camille got out of the car and hurried to the central entrance. There she was stopped by a guard and asked to wait for the nurse on duty. Five whole minutes passed before she appeared. Good afternoon. I've got a daughter on bed rest here. Can I see her at least a glimpse? Good afternoon. What's her first and last name? Emily is 25 years old. Brown hair. Okay, stop. You don't need to list her physical appearance. The nurse interrupted her and looked at the list. I already know who we're talking about. She's in the labor and delivery ward, but you'll still have to wait. The midwives are doing their best, but it's not fast. You know that. Of course it is. Camille exclaimed. It's not like you're in a performance arena. We have other women in labor who need to rest. Really, you can understand the excitement and all that. I'm sorry, I'm really, really nervous. And you said the midwives are trying. Emily's having some kind of problem. No, it's just that the baby seems to be big. The nurse replied with a smile, and then she adjusted her robe. Well, this is the news, we will have a rich man in our family. What happiness. I cannot even convey in words. Save your emotions for future congratulations. When your daughter gives birth, then you'll jump with happiness. In the meantime, you have to wait for her first labor. It may not be her last. Thank you, Evelyn. Evelyn is the nurse's name. Yes, thank you, Evelyn. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. Camille nodded. You're welcome. But the midwives are to be commended. They're the ones who bring babies into the world. It's their most demanding job. It takes a lot of effort and nerve for moms to give birth safely. That's true. I forgot all about it on the way here. Well, you'll be expecting, won't you? I have work to do. As soon as this miraculous event happens, I'll let you know. Then I'll sit on the bench in the courtyard. There's some shade. The nurse looked at the guard. He nodded and said, you can wait here. It's not outdoors and sitting in the heat for so many hours is not the best solution. Thank you. Good health and prosperity to you. Camille thanked them. And while her daughter was in labor, she sat next to the guard. He entertained her as best he could with funny anecdotes. But they were only soothing for a moment, and then the troubling thoughts would return. And Camille frowned her eyebrows at the thought of her daughter in the maternity ward. At the same time, she relied on the professionalism of the midwives, 
because the nurse's words about their work gave her cautious optimism. Glancing at her watch, every now and then she turned her head toward the corridor. It was from there that the nurse would appear and deliver the long-awaited news. But as time passed, Evelyn did not return, and Camille became visibly nervous. Her hands shook and her left eye twitched. The guard noticed her nervousness and tried to calm her down. Everything will be fine. You'll see, our midwives are the best around. It's been a long time since Evelyn's been here. They told you it was a difficult labor. The baby's big, the guard reminded the nurse. Daughter, my darling, may you do well. Camille said with tears in her eyes. Waiting was weighing on her nervous system, and she could hardly sit in one place. From time to time, she got up from her chair to walk a little and stretch her legs. The guard shook his head, but did not interfere with her with his advice. He realized that words could not solve everything, especially the worries of his own mother. So he calmly observed the situation, looking at the crossword puzzle. Meanwhile, Camille went outside again. She needed a breath of fresh air in her temples. Pulse was vomiting and the back of her head was broken. So she could barely contain the piercing pain and coupled with the worry it was pressing even harder on her brain. Finally, towards evening, when already patience was at the limit, heard the voice of the nurse, she flew straight down the corridor, and gesticulating joyfully at that. From her look and the smile on her face Camille realized that the labor had ended successfully. A boy at 3,952 centimeters, a giant, congratulations, you can see your daughter, it's such a blessing. What kind of happiness? I'm the happiest grandmother in the world now. By the way, am I allowed in her room? Through the glass, look. But if the doctor says it's okay, you can hold the baby. We can allow husbands and close relatives in the labor room. Is it your daughter's husband here? No, he's on a business trip, shook his head Camille. He was sent away unexpectedly just before the birth. Well, he will be even happier when he arrives. The nurse smiled. Yes, you're probably right. Camille said, almost in a whisper. She couldn't hear a thing. Let's go, and I'll show you to your daughter. But before they went upstairs, they went into a room and Camille changed her clothes. She was given a white robe, a bonnet, and booties. And so she went to her daughter's room. And while she silently followed the nurse, she wrote a message to her son-in-law. Congratulations on your son. Four kilograms bogator. But no reply to the message came at the same second. And that made her a little wary. She naively thought that Michael was just waiting to be excited about the birth of a child. But in fact, he was completely in work and was practically not distracted by anything. He didn't even read the message from his mother-in-law right away. Going up to the second floor, they walked down a long corridor and stopped near room number seven. Through the glass, you could see her daughter lying on a special bed. And most importantly, with her next to her was a child, whom she gently pressed to her chest, crying. Camille looked at the nurse. I'm looking at you and I can't help but let you come into the room. Besides, the doctor said yes, but not for long. And I understand and thank you for your kindness. Having opened the door, she cautiously peeped in and immediately met her eyes with Emily's daughter and cried with joy, holding the child with one hand and beckoned them to her with the other. Mother, how happy I am to have such a son. I only wish Michael could see it. Camille went to the bed and leaned over and kissed her on the top of her head. At that moment, the baby frowned and began to fuss. Without thinking, she took him in her arms and began to rock him, humming a lullaby. After a couple minutes, he calmed down and there was silence again. Emily rose up on one elbow and cocked an eyebrow. Disgruntled, she asked. He still hadn't made contact. Not yet, no, I sent him a message. Should respond. I called too, but Michael didn't even pick up. Is he so busy he can't even pick up the phone? Don't worry about it. He'll answer or call back, Camille tried to reassure her daughter. And just as she said these words, a familiar music started playing. It was a message notification coming in. Handing the baby back to Emily, she pulled out her phone and began to read. It didn't take her more than a minute to familiarize herself with the contents of the message from her son-in-law. And judging by her facial expressions, she wasn't too happy about it. But something mom sent Michael. Yeah, you guessed it. I just didn't see much joy. 
Give it to me. I'll read it myself. Emily demanded her phone and she handed it over. For about a minute too, she drove her eyes around, studying her husband's reply. It contained the following words. Thank you. Wow, I don't have any heroes in my family. It must be some kind of phenomenon. Tell Emily I'll be there soon. That was the end of the message. What did he mean by phenomenon? She never understood. But it sounded kind of hurtful. Like Michael didn't believe it was his son. Emily handed the phone back to her mother and cried. Daughter, what are you doing? He just texted that he wasn't expecting such a big guy. I'd be surprised too, if I were him. To be honest, we don't have any similar cases in our family. And neither have you. Mom almost screamed at Emily. You think it's some kind of phenomenon too. And the baby's not Michael's. No, I don't think so. I shook my head. It's okay. You can't be nervous right now. Then why did he text me like that? Why didn't he congratulate me anyway? Why didn't he call me? Just be patient for a while. When he has a free moment, he'll do it. And she was right on the money again. Because Emily's phone was interrupted, she purposely turned the sound down so that it wouldn't make noise or scare the baby. Her husband's name popped up on the screen and she immediately smiled. Hello, my love. His gentle voice sounded into the receiver. I'm sorry I couldn't attend the birth in person. But you know how I react to such events. Yes, of course, we have already discussed it calmly and without nerves, replied Emily. I want to congratulate you, or rather, us on the birth of our son. And wish him good health. And you and I have enough endurance and patience for the rest of our lives. Thank you. That was really nice to hear. But I'm still a little hurt that you left on the eve of the birth. You could have talked to the company and stayed. The director is aware of it, but he just had no other choice. Michael replied with regret in his voice. And I'll try to make up for what I missed. Love. Okay, I get it. Work is work. Emily sounded a little uncertain. And it sounded like veiled resentment. I'm sorry, I really didn't have a chance to come. But I'm traveling back tomorrow. So I'll see you soon. Ethan and I will be waiting for you very much. Did you decide on that name after all? Michael asked. Yes, those two, I canceled them, because they don't sound like your middle name. What do you think? Do you like it? You bet, Ethan's bright and presentable, but kisses, sweetheart. I have to go to a meeting. And I kiss you, my love, and wish you good luck. Emily pressed the hang up button and placed the phone carelessly on the nightstand. What's wrong with you? Are you not happy that you talked to your husband? Her mother asked in surprise, yes and no. He answered dryly, as if you were recording. It was as if he wasn't talking to me, but to his colleagues. Maybe you imagined it. No, I'm not deaf, and my heart can feel everything. At that moment, the baby stirred again, and she gently put her arm around him and kissed him gently on the nose. The joy of motherhood restrained Emily from harsh words to her husband. And it was telling that she was very nervous, perhaps because of the difficult labor, or was there some other reason? At the same time to answer clearly and distinctly to herself what she was worried in the first place. Emily could not yet. She thought for a moment, and it seemed to her mother that her daughter had fallen into a comatose state. At least, that's what it looked like from the outside. And to make sure that everything was all right, she came closer and cautiously said, Daughter, I still haven't gone anywhere here. I can see mommy just caught the silence, frowned Emily. Sometimes it's actually quite helpful. Just staring at one point and thinking about something. And what would that be, if it's not a secret? Like why I didn't ask him about that message. Well, you heard him say he was in a hurry to get to a meeting. Your mother shrugged. Exactly, that's what's important, not my labor. He just pretended to be happy and didn't say anything about his doubts. As if I did not understand from whom I gave birth to a rich man. Don't say that, daughter. Or we will really start doubting together and it will not lead to anything good. We should be happy, not looking for reasons to fight. I wasn't going to fight with Michael, I shrugged. Emily was just saying her thoughts out loud. Let's keep them between us, Camille nodded. You were so happy when you heard your husband's voice. And now it's irritation talking, fatigue and nervous tension. My mother is probably right, and I'm probably making myself nervous. I just need to relax and not think about sad things. 
especially since Michael said he'd be here soon. Exactly. Maybe he'll pick you up from the hospital too. Irritation and nervousness. Indeed, Emily still hadn't let go, and it made her even more cranky, like a little girl. But that's not surprising. After childbirth, women do not immediately come to their senses. They need time to calm down, and sometimes it drags on for several days. At this time, close people have to show outstanding patience, and none of them grumble. Everyone realizes that childbirth is not a procedure in a space salon, and the most real trials. There have been cases where women have almost lost their lives, and all because they differed in body condition and skeletal structure. Emily, however, was lucky in this respect. She was a girl in a body, and she had no trouble bringing a child into the world. Yes, she had to strain and scream, but it worked. Plus, the obstetricians showed a high quality of skill and ended up helping her deliver a healthy and large baby. Thank you for being by my side as always Emily thanked her mother. Well, how could I not? I was going through it myself, she smiled and nodded. And dad was working at the time too, wasn't he? Remember, he wasn't. But it was a different time then. He had a new position coming up, and he couldn't just take off. Not even his wife's people, Emily wondered. Even though she'd heard the story a hundred times, it couldn't be helped. The country needed professional staff, shrugged the mother. What about the children? They did too. But we didn't have as much support from the state then as you do now. We need to increase demography. That's what we're trying to do. Emily finally smiled, and it showed that her nervousness was gone. It was hoped that in the future she would be able to adapt to the postpartum period. In any case, she would not become cranky for any reason and show her irritation. In the maternity hospital, of course, a lot of things were forgiven and looked at certain things through their fingers. But if any mommy drove the staff to a white fury, they tried to say goodbye to her as quickly as possible and did everything to make her discharge sooner and leave the walls of the hospital. That's when there was silence. However, not for a long time, literally until the next cranky woman in labor. But they had time to rest and catch their breath. It was not so easy, it turned out, to take care of such patients and it was necessary to restrain themselves emotionally, so that patience did not break. Camille looked at her watch, sighed heavily, and asked cautiously, What can I get you tomorrow red apples and a couple of liters of grape juice? Maybe something to steam. If only a breast fillet, Emily shrugged. And don't forget the broth, I'll have that too. Okay, I'll do it. Her daughter smiled back, and took her grandson in her arms again, he calmed down and seemed to fall asleep, oblivious to external stimuli. Camille held him close to her and looked at him with a smile on her face. It was obvious that she was straight, partly as if she had given birth to a child of her own. Emily noticed the tears in her eyes, and she almost sobbed, too. I remembered how you used to read me a bedtime story when I was a child. You looked at me like that and smiled and I still get chills running up and down my spine. Whenever I see that look, it's hereditary. My mom used to do the same thing, but she told stories not from books, but from memory. And to be honest, I wondered how she knew so much. Every day something new, and not a single repetition. That's a phenomenal memory. So you kept books in your hands as long as your eyesight allowed. I didn't really have a taste for them, and I don't now. Maybe Epin won't go, and she made an indiscreet assumption. I don't know, Mama, Emily shrugged. He's only just born and he's not in the mood for books yet. But if you think it would be good for him, I can read stories to him sometimes. I think they say it calms the nervous system. Who knows, maybe he'll be less cranky. That would be nice, because I have a feeling he's taken over my personality. Just as hot-tempered and emotional. Tell me about it. Sometimes I wonder how Michael puts up with me. Emily rounded her eyes and shook her head. You see, you already do not scold him and do not get angry, said the mother. That's a sure sign that you're coming to your senses after childbirth. If you continue like this, they won't keep you here for long. How do you want me to get home as soon as possible? I can't wait to babysit my grandson. Yes, my daughter is a great joy to me. You're all grown up and you don't eat diapers. Your grandson, on the other hand, has his whole life ahead of him. 
and you need to make sure he's taken care of as much as possible. I know mom, especially since Michael's made all the arrangements. But at first, my son's still gonna be spending more time with us. I don't disagree. But you're gonna have to get him used to sleeping in his own crib. And if you don't do that, you'll never get him out of your skirt. So he's my little boy, and I love him very much. After Emily said that, she gestured for the baby to come back. Okay, go back to your mom. I still have time to babysit you. Kissed her grandson on the cheek. She gently laid him down next to her daughter. Emily smiled back and began to stroke her son in a feminine way. He flailed his brow and made funny lips. It was as if he had been having strange dreams and they disturbed him a little. There was no cause for alarm, however, and so far she had nothing to worry about. She had been in such a confused state which he had not yet fully realized that she had given birth. She still imagined herself pregnant, and this child was there to support her. Meanwhile, her mother knew exactly what was happening to her daughter at that moment. Exactly 25 years ago, she too had been in the same state. But she came to her senses quickly. Maybe it was her mother's support, or maybe it was my own attitude. Daughter partially adopted the character of her husband, and he could sometimes flare up for no reason. And sometimes it was hard to stop him. No amount of persuasion helped. He then himself calmed down and wondered how such a thing could happen. Naturally, he apologized and vowed to keep himself in control. Soon, however, everything would happen again, and then the household simply did not pay attention to it. They did not take much pleasure in arguing with a man who persisted in his position. It was like beating against a wall that only gave off dust, but still held on. Camille's husband was distinguished by the fact that he rarely ever strayed from his principles. And if he did, everyone sighed in relief and jokingly said it would probably snow in the summer. I'm going to feed Ethan now and get some sleep, Emily said, getting back on her back. Okay, well, I'm going to go home and not come back to see you. Everything seems fine there. No, don't. Michael's coming back tomorrow, and I think he'll be here in a couple days and I'll probably be discharged by then so he'll be back in time to pick me up from the hospital. Good, then yes, tomorrow will bring everything you asked for. Camille nodded and left the room. At that moment, the nurse Evelyn approached her. But as you can imagine, with my grandson with great pleasure, I wouldn't leave like this. Looking at him makes me want to cry. It always does. I don't have grandchildren yet, but I totally understand. Children are our future and their future will depend on how we bring them up and what we put into them. Wise words, and I would even say golden. Camille praised her. And if it's not too difficult for you, then you should reconsider my daughter. She's a quiet girl, but she can get angry sometimes, so I'm worried about her having a nervous breakdown. Okay, I hear you. And she'll be monitored until she's discharged. Thank you in advance. You're a very kind and supportive person. But there are other reasons for her temper. Careful, asked the nurse, and at that frowned his eyebrows. Well, how can I tell you? For example, the peoples didn't come. Husband shrugged Camille, although they had discussed this point, but she still hoped that Michael would show up. Not every man can withstand such a spectacle. My spouse didn't attend the birth either. He said if you want me to fall right on top of you, you can take your chances. And I did not do it, because I presented the picture of falling two-meter man and I became scared, but not for myself, but for the rest of the staff. Yeah, I hear you, but I still wanted to see him here today. I don't blame my son-in-law in any way. He's a really busy man and he works a lot, and sometimes he doesn't even have time for himself, not to mention everything else. On the other hand, to make it less fussy, he tidied up the baby's room right away. You see, the nurse raised her index finger. He was worried and prepared in advance. Some people only start shopping after the baby is born and buy the most necessary things in a hurry, without considering the unnecessary expenses. What do you want to say with this? To the sea in the forehead? Camille asked. Well, you can buy cheaper if you know where to go. I mean that if everything is done at the last minute, it's a clear sign of disorganization. And then it affects everything on the relationship, on the child's upbringing and just on everyday life. I get it. I was thinking about the wrong thing. Thanks again for your support and goodbye. Have a good day. You don't have to worry about your daughter. 
She's in good hands. Camille took the same route back down to the first floor. The guard met her again and asked her with a smile on his face. So daughter and grandson. Everything went well, more than I am very satisfied. Just as cheerfully she replied. To him it feels like me again. Well, well, let's not talk about age, the guard interrupted her. We were all young once, as you so rightly point out, and most importantly, you spoke of youth. I still remember it, and I can't believe that time flew by so quickly. It takes a long time in the beginning, and then it slips away at full speed. Thank you for your kind words. After saying goodbye to the guard, she went outside and immediately dialed the number of a cab. By a strange coincidence, the same driver arrived five minutes later. He smiled broadly and said humorously, We are like two lonely hearts once met, and again we are magnetically attracted to each other. What a joke, you want to laugh and cry. Camille wagged his finger at him, and just like last time, she got in the back seat. I apologize if I've offended you. He apologized. The driver started the car and then asked quietly, Are we going to the same address? No, I'm going home now. I need to clean up and get a good night's sleep. So my daughter had a baby. Yeah, a boy, almost four pounds. Wow. Wow. He's gonna grow up to be a real big boy, and he's gonna take on all the boys in the yard. You're wrong. My daughter will raise him with nothing but good and positive qualities. I don't disagree. But it seems to me that almost all sons follow in the footsteps of their fathers. The driver shrugged his shoulders and at the same time made an assumption about the boy's future. We'll see. It's too early to make predictions now. Camille nodded affirmatively, and then she stopped talking. The driver realized that the conversation was over, and then they drove in complete silence. Even the music did not play in the speaker, although he always turned on a soothing melody and only for her he made an exception because after today's events, she needed complete peace. She hadn't told him that directly, of course, but the look on her face was enough to read her thoughts. All the way there, he kept glancing in the rearview mirror, worried the passenger wouldn't get sick. She talked to him sluggishly and generally looked tired, but that's understandable. All day she sat in the corridor, waiting for her daughter to give birth, did not gather herself and did not leave with honor, withstood this ordeal and it's a good thing the guard was so talkative, with his not-so-funny anecdotes. He distracted her a little from sad thoughts, and at the same time did not let her fall asleep. Otherwise, she'd lie right where she was sitting. All in all, it had been a busy day, especially for the nervous system. It was only towards the end when the nurse told her the good news. After that, it seemed, one could not only dance, but also start one's life with a clean slate. However, if Camille had been offered something like that, she would definitely have refused. And first of all, because there would be no Emily in her new life. And she wanted a daughter so much, and she resembled her in every way. And nature responded with a long-awaited gift. That's why she wouldn't have started from scratch. Besides, she wouldn't have all the events and moments she'd been through. 20 minutes later, they pulled up to the right house. And the driver loudly announced the final stop. Yes, thank you in a sleepy voice. She answered him and took the money out of her purse. Apparently, she fell asleep and didn't realize she'd slept through the whole route. Keep the change as always. Thank you and have a good day. You too. I waved him off. Camille entered the entrance and went up to the third floor. Something clicked in the keyhole. And in a few seconds, she was in the hallway. No other sounds were even close to being heard. The silence and emptiness echoed from everywhere, as if she had fallen under the ground. Though in fact, that was exactly how she felt now. In the soul from side to side through despair and all, because there was no dedication in the form of concrete cases. There was no doubt that helping her daughter was going to count for something. However, she needed something more. And now with the birth of her grandson, there was a faint hope that she would no longer sit in these four walls like a bird in a cage. Camille had recently experienced the full extent of loneliness, and this despite the presence of her daughter, who loved her with all her heart. As it was easy to guess, the whole problem was up for grabs. Michael had a way of pushing people away from him, and yet doing absolutely nothing about it. In other words, a person did not immediately notice that he was alienated, 
but only after some time, when it was too late to change anything. And Camille was seriously afraid that she would lose the point. Or rather, the opportunity to see her would be taken away from her, and she would be put in front of an uncomfortable fact, forced to accept it as a new reality. Soon, however, the opposite happened, and a series of severe trials began afterward. They fell entirely on Camille and her daughter. Michael, on the other hand, remained on the sidelines and did not take any part in it. He became as if a stranger next to the people close to him. And this circumstance forced them to act in an emergency mode. They had to part with something, but they gained something. The truth, what happened next proved with extreme precision who and what they were. And one of them had to accept an unenviable fate as punishment for the unforgivable mistake he had made. After shedding her outer garments, Camille went into the kitchen and put the kettle on. I mean, I didn't feel like it. But to sip the aroma of another drink her soul demanded. There was such a fire inside that she could hardly breathe in her chest, as if with the discs of an ox, but not from fatigue. This state had nothing to do with today's busy day. On the contrary, after her daughter gave birth, she felt relieved, and she didn't leave her until she got home. And already here a completely different set of emotions arose. They kind of signaled something important. It made you think and compare. And against this background, I drew not the most comforting general conclusions. And that was especially true of the relationship between her son-in-law and her daughter. From the moment Emily became pregnant, he had changed dramatically. If before that he spent all his free time with her, then soon he began to have unforeseen business trips. And not anywhere, but as far away from home as possible and most often in the same city. Emily loved her husband immensely and did not seem to notice the obvious things. And only her mother tormented herself with murky suspicions, but she could not express them because she was afraid of her daughter's anger. Besides, suspicions alone meant nothing. Michael could have had 100 reasons to go on a long business trip, but the fact that he began to do it at regular intervals created those suspicions. They've been building up like a snowball, and they've been building up, and they've been building up to even more difficult thoughts. And in fact, some of them floated near the surface, such as the choice of interior design for the children's room. After all, Michael insisted on his own option, contrary to Emily's opinion, and did not even listen to her. Although she offered not the worst ideas, perhaps not so original, but not empty. From the outside, it would seem that he wasn't doing the upgrades for his son, or he'd gone to the trouble of appearing to be a loving and caring husband. Either way, both versions and all could not be ruled out because they could lead to the same sad denouement. Among other things, today's surprises about the baby's weight. He was not born skinny, and that, on the contrary, was to be rejoiced over. However, Michael said that he did not have such a stout child in his family. At the same time, he cleverly twisted his arm. When Emily began to demand explanations from him, I pressed on her pain points, and she immediately melted. But then she pulled herself back together and came back to reality. And she was aided by her mother's genes. It wasn't easy to deceive. Only two people had ever managed to do it in their entire lives. And her husband wasn't one of them. He only showed character. Otherwise, he didn't even try to get away with it or look for false traces to deceive, only to end up being exposed. After drinking a couple mugs of soothing tea, she still couldn't sleep for a long time afterward. All the same thoughts that had overcome her during the day were in her head and kept her awake. There was a sense of falseness on the part of her son-in-law, but without any obvious signs. Such an impression, as if he skillfully managed to disguise all his secret steps. And they were not even out of the general background, as if they went in unison. At the same time, she saw no reason to relax. It was for her daughter to make a picture that everything was all right. But what was really going on in her soul? Emily was not yet to know. Right now, her condition required not only peace, but also an attitude of positive emotions. Knowing this, her mother remained neutral and did not make any sudden movements. In a sense, she even tried to present her son-in-law with a good side. But slightly miscalculated, because Emily was also not a finger maid and did not believe in the sincerity of her husband, who rejoiced at the birth of a hero. 
After all, he gave himself away. He doubted his paternity, though figuratively, and did not hurry to make it clear. Why did he suddenly have such thoughts? He could have asked his wife. Beloved, probably you had a family of bogaters? But he did not do that, which spoke of his partial indifference. Well, a big son was born, and that's fine. That's good too. No warm feelings though, on the other hand, it was pointless to speculate on that alone. And Camille understood that perfectly well. Like two times two in math. The only thing she couldn't do was put the rebus together. As it was, but with different particles that sometimes didn't fit together at all. And it was necessary to find the key link. Especially since it was somewhere very close, right at the surface, in plain sight like an eyesore. But there was no way to look at it from the outside. That's what worried Camille. She knew where to look. But she didn't have enough equipment. And to get them required certain steps. But Emily's mother could not dare to take them yet, and waited for a convenient moment for her son-in-law to reveal himself. However, in the process of disclosure of fate intervened and without unnecessary effort, all put everything in its place. Michael soon after his arrival showed himself in all his glory and surprised not only his wife with this statement, but also those who trusted him without complaint, in fact, shocked his immediate environment, leaving them in complete bewilderment. In the morning, Camille woke up as if she had been broken. A hard night of heavy thinking had taken a toll on her overall health. She barely made it to the bathroom to wash her face and asked herself angrily, who makes you think so much? The question sounded hollow because she didn't know how to answer it yet. Surprisingly, she didn't even have any thoughts about it in her head. It was as if her brain had shut down and was still in hibernation. And to bring it back to its awake state, it was necessary to take a contrast shower first and then drink a cup of coffee. Camille did just that, but it only partially helped. She remembered what her daughter had asked for closer to lunchtime and prepared everything in a special container so that nothing would spill. There was broth and a plucky breast. From it came such a flavor that drool involuntarily flowed. She barely restrained herself from opening the container, but instead picked up a couple of sandwiches and skewered them hastily. All thoughts were of driving to her daughter's house and taking her to the hotel. On the way, she stopped by the store and bought juice and a pound of red apples. And with all this good stuff she rushed to the maternity hospital. However today she was not allowed into the ward, because there was another shift, and she had to pass the package through the duty nurse's post. However, Emily was able to go to the window and wave her hand. You could see that her daughter had recovered from yesterday, and didn't look so gloomy anymore. Most likely that she had realized and accepted the new reality during the previous night. Suddenly she pointed to a nearby window, and Camille realized that her daughter was about to open it. And in a few minutes, they were able to have a live conversation. Hey, how are you? Hi, mom, I'm fine. And I calmed down. And Ethan doesn't get cranky as much. Have you fed him yet? Yeah, of course. Emily shrugged it off. He's sleeping now. I won't disturb him yet. By the way, the shift has changed, so you won't see me again until you're discharged. But we can talk on the phone if you need to. It's okay, I'll be fine. It's only a couple days, and you know it's easier for me to say that than to call. Okay, mom, thank you so much for the broth. I'm so hungry for your cooking. It's time for me to learn. Time is of the essence. She smiled and wagged her index finger at her. Who else would it be for? Michael can't stand the sight of me. I don't eat much. Emily replied with annoyance in her voice. And then the alarm bell sounded again. Camille tried to grasp its essence, but she failed. It was as if she had lost her ability to think logically. Everything in her head was jumbled and jumbled like a serialized reel, and she could hardly find the right words. It's never too late to learn. When your son grows up, you'll pass on your knowledge to him. You think he'll want to learn the basics of cooking. Why wouldn't he? Your father could cook, but I didn't let him because I wanted to take care of him. So that's why you were angry when he tried to bring you breakfast in bed in the morning. Emily laughed and wagged her index finger. And not only for that reason shook her mother's head, but also because she considered such an excessive display of tenderness be. But dad was still trying. Maybe Ethan was really like him. We had a handsome boy, we were big. It's not impossible. Daughter, especially since his mother, God rest her soul, 
said that he was a big boy when he was a child. That's the version I'm gonna give Michael. Emily smiled slyly. Don't let him say that we didn't have any heroes in our family. It's just a pity that it didn't help dad, and the disease still twisted him. That's the thing, that healthy people pass away, shook her mother's head. Are you going to the cottage today? Yes, I should take out the weeds and water the flowers. We're not doing anything else. We'll wait for Michael to come back from his business trip. Do you think he'll do it? Camille smiled ironically. Let him get used to it. Emily waved her hand, and I won't be able to help you yet. At least he'll be supportive. Nothing will happen to him. If you go to the cottage after work for a week or two, it's good for your health and good for the family. Well, we'll see. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, but I'm going to see my son. He'll wake up soon. Kiss me our bogator with a smile and loudly said the mother and sent her an air kiss. And everyone who was also socializing under the windows turned sharply in her direction. From such intense attention, Camille was a little embarrassed, but immediately realized why it happened and that they had no negative assumptions about the appearance of the child. She proudly said that he was born almost four kilograms. That's why we call him a bogator. Congratulations. It came from all directions, and Camille barely fought them off while they shook her hand. However, she appreciated such a reaction and concluded that there were no large children among the other women in labor. So they were surprised when they heard about the four kilograms, probably imagined a lump with rotten meters, and they were partly right. After all, Ethan did look well-fed with a baby. But on the other hand, it didn't cause any problems. He didn't pass on and ate equally with everyone else, behaved calmly, didn't throw tantrums, and gave his mother a chance for a full night's sleep. Emily was even lucky to have such a balanced child, and this despite the fact that she was a fiery person. In him closely intertwined genes of both parents and formed a unique image of an individual personality, hair and eye color. At first, Ethan adopted from his mother, but the external contour, face, lips and structure, cheekbones from his father, all of which made him a truly beautiful child, for whom Emily would have spared nothing. She fully realized her role as a mother and no longer worried about how she would raise her son on an intuitive level. Emily felt fully supported, but only not yet divided it among themselves and did not analyze from whom it comes more. And only after a while everything fell into place, the day of her husband's arrival was approaching, and Emily was visibly worried. She had already been informed about the discharge and prepared the necessary recommendations for the further care of the child. In addition, the day before Michael had sent a message in which she wrote that he would pick her up from the hospital himself. True, there were no bright smiley faces in it, and it said that her husband wrote this message without much enthusiasm. But at the same time, Emily did not go into details and demand explanations. She wanted with every fiber of her being to return home as soon as possible and finally feel herself in the native element near her loved ones. A little earlier, half an hour before Michael arrived, her mother arrived. Camille was not allowed into the ward again, and while she was humbly waiting for her daughter, other happy fathers and relatives reached the special exit, and everyone was languidly waiting to see if they would be allowed to pick up their new moms. The head nurse and Camille came around the corner, out of the corner of my eye, I saw my brother-in-law's license plate. He pulled up not far from the entrance. When he got out, he had a modest bouquet of flowers in one hand and a black bag in the other. Apparently, a gentleman's kit for the medical staff. Basically, she hadn't noticed anything strange yet, and it was possible to assume that the son-in-law was really happy to meet his wife from the maternity hospital. But as soon as Michael approached her, he was immediately cold. Hello, Camille. Did you come here before me or have you been on duty since yesterday? Hello, Michael. She answered him with the same restraint. If they'd let me stay, I wouldn't have left here at all. But don't judge me. I didn't wait, by the way. I was making money. I'm sure you did. I see you're not in the mood, Michael summarized. Well, with your permission, I'll wait for my wife in silence. Camille made no reply, for just at that moment, Emily appeared at the door. She was carrying the baby in her arms, and she was glowing with happiness. She was assisted by the same nurse, Evelyn. But Emily seemed to be doing quite well without her. 
At least she didn't fall or stagger. She had enough strength to move around normally. When Michael saw his wife, he smiled and almost confused who to give what to. Hello my love, I'm so glad we're back together. Now it's our baby too, and hello sweetheart. Emily interrupted him and handed him the baby in his arms. It's so beautiful, just like you. It's got yours in it. Don't worry. In fact, he's like two peas in a pod in his parents. Yeah, yeah, I just said the wrong thing. Michael got nervous and even blushed a little. Camille intervened, noticing the confusion on his son-in-law's face. Okay, I'll just be a minute. He quickly handed his son to his mother-in-law. It was as if the burden was burning his hands, and he could not feel at ease while he was holding his own son in front of him. Another alarm bell rang, but this time Kinmil did not pay any attention to it. Or rather, she didn't want to think about it on a day like this. After all, she was welcoming her daughter and grandson from the hospital. All other problems and questions were in the background. And even this situation with the transfer of the child was not an exception. Meanwhile, Emily also noticed how her husband too quickly agreed to give the child away. He could have been supportive. I could have unlocked the car myself. Maybe you don't even trust me with the keys anymore. What are you, my favorite? Of course I do. Michael replied with a tremor in his voice. It just seemed a little tired and not in the right state of mind to be fiddling with keys. I'm fine. Open up, Emily commanded, and taking the baby from the mother, she said softly, we opened their eyes. We're learning about the world around us. Look, he's trying to see where they took him. Camille said with a smile. Mom, but he can't see anything yet. Yes, I know, but it's still interesting. He's a great big guy. It makes your heart swoon to see such beauty. Why do you keep using that word? Michael grumbled unhappily, opening the cabin door in front of them. Yeah, from the fact that he was born big. Emily cut him off. You'll see when you're home drunk. All right, get in, let's go. Emily and the baby and her mother sat in the back seat and put small pillows in their laps. Michael had carried them with him just in case, so he could stop and pick them up on the road. Look in the rearview mirror. He made sure everything was in order and pulled out of the driveway. The car pulled smoothly out of the maternity hospital grounds and headed toward home. On the road, neither of them said a word, as if there was nothing to talk about. Even Camille was silent, though she had something to say and how to present it. But she decided not to stir things up. She had had enough of her son-in-law's greeting. He looked at her so haughtily, as if there was a gulf between them. And to cross it, it was necessary to build bridges in the form of status promotion. In other words, to rise to his level, to be able to talk on equal terms. But she was not going to do it, because she realized that her son-in-law would not appreciate it anyway and would look for new gaps to get even more distant. Having combined all these alarm bells, it was possible to come to the conclusion that Michael planned some meanness. But what exactly was going on in his head was still a mystery. Camille tried to catch the course of his thoughts, but he was constantly maneuvering. It was as if he felt that his mother-in-law was waiting for a convenient moment to catch him on some word. When they arrived home, they all went to the nursery together. There Emily laid her son on the bed and crucified him. Michael looked at him calmly and said indifferently, and I wouldn't say that the rich boy is just a well-fed child. You sound like you're upset. Emily replied unhappily. No, I just judged his complexion, shook my head, and in his eyes did not even light up fire. It usually happened at the moment of the first acquaintance with the child, and the new parents, whether father or mother directly begged for happiness and visibly worried, but not Michael. He was very calm, as if the son was not brought from the hospital and bought in a toy store on sale. About the same condition could be read on his face. And Emily, sensing her husband's indifference to her own child, muttered unhappily, it would be better to help with the tapes than to stand there. Well, I don't know how. Look how it is necessary and memorize. Might come in handy. In what way? Michael frowned. You're always at work. I'm confused with the baby. But it could happen that you're going to be overwhelmed. Yeah, well, you have to study. How about a celebratory dinner? Not tonight. Emily crossed her arms across her chest and made a sour face. What about you, Camille? 
He turned to his mother-in-law. I don't think we should celebrate today either. She shrugged. Let's do it sometime next weekend, just in time for the cottage. Water your flowers again. No one's forcing you. Mom can do it herself. Emily cut him off. Even though I told him at the hospital he'd be helping for at least a couple weeks. In general, as I understand it, today the holiday is cancelled. Just in case, I decided to check with Michael. Yes, the wife and mother-in-law answered in one voice. I see. Then we continue to learn how to swaddle. We bent over the baby. He began to change the tape together with his wife, and at the same time his mother-in-law was watching him. And she had already formed a definite opinion. What should she and her daughter expect in the future? She clearly imagined how her son-in-law would change in a month or sooner. Judging by the way he behaved now, it was safe to say that he was preparing for something unexpected. And soon it happened. Or rather, in a week. That's how long it took Michael to reveal his cards. Only he could not imagine what would be waiting for him in the future. He had counted on a pleasant and promising prospect, but in the end he fell to the bottom of life, and none of his friends felt sorry or lent a helping hand. After all, he had committed an act for which there was no justification at all. Not only that, he did not have the courage to ask for forgiveness from the closest people. He simply took and burned all the bridges. However, all this did not happen overnight, but over a period of time. Fate quietly sneaks up on him to send a boomerang in return. And he struck such a blow that overnight overturned all notions of good and evil. Michael found himself in a place he never expected. He'd never even dreamed of this world. He had only heard about it from his acquaintances, and even then the most superficial information. But when he was plunged there with his head, he howled and remembered everything he had done before. His brains did not turn off and gave out new images from the depths of his subconsciousness. One was scarier than the other, and it seemed that there was neither end nor edge. So much swam, and his soul with dirt and varnish, that he almost did not notice anything. It was only his mother-in-law who discerned his amorphousness, but too late to notify her daughter of it. Emily was caught in our usual debriefing when she was confronted with the fact, and in such a harsh form that she almost lost the gift of speech, she still had faith that her husband would not leave her and find another woman. But he did even worse and thereby signed a one-way ticket to normal surroundings, and he would not be able to get there for a long time, at least not without help. And when Michael bypassed the real prospect of further existence, he began to look at many things differently. But by that time the flywheel of the fateful boomerang had spun to its full speed and was not going to let him out of its orbit. After Emily showed her husband the process of the experience, he seemed to understand the basics and promised to keep practicing. Even assured everyone that he would be the best father ever. You'll see, just give it time, and soon you won't recognize me at all. You're careful with the changes, Emily. Ethan and I are really going to wonder who that uncle is living with us. That's a good one. I'll keep that in mind. Michael said snidely. What about you, Camille? Did your son-in-law learn to take over the child? Just the tops. But it's a simple matter. And even more ironically, she replied. We'll see how you behave when you have to stay with him all day. I hope it doesn't come to that. Honey, are you scared or something? No, I'm just a little worried, I shrugged. See, Mom, it's just normal excitement. Emily smiled. It takes time to get used to everything. You didn't know how to take care of a baby right away, either. You must have had some guidance, right? What about it? Of course they scolded me, especially my mom. I remember her scolding me in front of the whole family. For the fact that the diapers did not swallow, so ashamed I was ready to fall through the ground. And there are many such cases I can remember. Let's not be sad. I'm going to cry, Michael begged. He looked at his wife and then at his mother-in-law. Are you serious or are you joking? Is he angry? Emily asked. Michael noticed the evil light in her eyes and out of sin answered in a low voice, I'm sorry, dear, it was a bad joke. And I understood everything and I won't interfere where I'm not asked anymore. That's not even the point. It's just that you're being ironic on purpose. It's like you're being spiteful. And don't tell me it's because you're in a good mood. I wasn't. You know that. That's it. Calm down. 
Camille intervened again. We don't need you two fighting. You haven't had time to pick up the baby yet. You're already fighting. Mom, we're not fighting. We're just prioritizing, Emily corrected her. Exactly. And all of a sudden you panic. Michael, like a fox putting in his five cents to justify himself to his mother-in-law. But she didn't even bat an eye, she just kept pushing her line. Your family is one more person. And it's time to get smart, put aside your liberties, and start living for a brighter future. So you're saying that before this, we had no future at all? In a disgruntled voice, Michael asked. Why not? There was something. But you are for yourself, and most of the time without any moral responsibility. Everything that happened between you, you perceived as ordinary things. And now it's time to look at life differently, and preferably from the other side. How do you do that, if it's no secret? It's very simple. You just have to compare your past, evaluate the future and form the present. And without any surprises, so that later you won't have to regret the aimlessly lived years. Do you know how to live mother-in-law, sometimes wise thoughts to squeeze out? Michael smiled, and I almost always do. You just don't notice it. And if nothing changes, I'll soon be nothing to you at all. What are you talking about, Camille? Yeah, mom's really not making a big deal out of it. Emily, we're supposed to be calming down, and you're just pouring oil on the fire. What am I doing? Outraged, she looked at her daughter. I'm sorry, mom, it just slipped out, honestly. That's not what I meant to say. And if you think okay, I don't think anything. I really should get going, she shrugged. I'm just gonna kiss my grandson goodbye, and you can walk me out. Yeah, sure. Michael immediately jumped up from the couch and followed his mother-in-law. He realized that he had to show his hospitality at the end, so he took the baby in his arms to give it to his grandmother. Camille made a surprised face in response, but took the grandchild from him. And while the excited parents watched her, she spoke to him in a gentle voice. Why is his forehead wrinkled? We don't want to open our eyes. Well, you've tortured me. I want to sleep, and you're here with your guests. I can't get any peace from you. Mom, that's so sweet. You're such an angel, Emily said with tears in her eyes. He's the angel. He gets all the attention. She nodded at her grandson. Now for him we must try to live for him, not for ourselves. Yes, we understand. Well, that's good. Then I'm off. If you need anything, call me anytime I'll come and babysit. Emily took her son back from her and put him in his crib. Interestingly enough, he didn't even get cranky. That's what grandmother's hands meant when they were centered in calmness itself. She could easily calm any child and set him in a positive mood. Michael realized it at once, but he didn't appreciate it. Having seen off the grandmother, the couple cooked a light dinner, refusing from delicacies and even less alcohol. It turned out quite well, considering the fact that Ethan continued to sleep peacefully. It was only towards nightfall that he woke up. But then Emily arrived in time with a new submariner and immediately came to his chest to feed. In such a rhythm, a whole week flew by imperceptibly. And it would seem that one could conclude that everything got better, but no. One evening, when they were getting ready and tucking the baby in, Michael suddenly said, It's not much. There's nothing like me in him at all. What are you talking about? Emily almost shouted, but immediately covered her mouth with her hand and cried quietly. And look at you, as if you were someone else's child. Michael, stop talking nonsense. What about you? What's going on with you today? Nothing. I just took your mom's advice and decided to look at life from a different perspective. I answered you snidely. Well, here's the thing. I decided to listen to her for once. That jerked Emily's shoulders. So what came to your mind? Why don't you share? The child is mute. That's the conclusion I've come to. And don't even try to change my mind. I'm not going to. But in a month's time, you'll be the one apologizing. We'll see about that. Don't guess when you don't know what the future holds. What do you mean? A frown on your brow? Asked Emily. Then you'll see when the time comes. What could it mean? She didn't know yet, but she was wary. Her husband had suddenly changed, for the worse. And interestingly enough, her mother had said the same thing. So Emily decided to do a DNA test to prove her parentage. 
In addition, she made her mother aware of the incident and generally offered to move in with her. Emily, however, refused. We have to wait a little longer. Maybe he's temporarily losing his mind. Then he should be in a mental institution, not among normal people. Well, mom, why so extreme? Because very soon he'll pull some other stunt and before you know it, you'll be out on the street. I don't think it'll come to that. Besides, he apologized the next day. He was a little tentative, like he didn't feel guilty. So what? You two don't talk at all now. Only in the morning and at night. It's still a bit of a stigma. Emily shrugged. And Michael understands that. But he doesn't want to admit it and keeps pretending that nothing happened. See for yourself. But my heart feels that this is a preparation for something more serious, warned her mother. I hear you. Soon will be the results of the examination. And then he will definitely calm down. At that moment, Emily had no idea what her husband was preparing for her. He didn't just get excited about the parentage. He had to prepare the ground and draw a line under certain actions. However, his wife was bending his line, and this fact forced him to force events. Michael did not wait for a convenient moment, which according to his calculations, was to come in two months and struck a blow at the most unexpected moment. But before that time, he and she kind of even made up and agreed that there would be no disagreements between them. And just so there was no doubt about it, personally, Michael started acting like a model family man. Since then, it's been another week and things have kind of calmed down. But eventually he ran out of patience and had another fight with his wife. So the neighbors were pointing fingers at them the next morning. Emily cried all night. At the same time, she did not sleep well because her son was capricious. The husband with his loud screams drove everyone to a white fury and first of all the child. He even began to shudder, and this did not bode well. The mother again offered Emily to move in with her and leave Michael for a while. But she again refused. And when the results of the examination came back, she presented them to her husband. He read them carefully and haughtily said, I don't believe these papers. This is not my child. Yes, how can you say that? Emily was angry, and she almost threw a punch at him. I carried our baby for nine months. You've been waiting for it to arrive, and now here you are. You don't want to admit it, but forensics won't lie. It says in black and white that he's your own son. I don't know anything. We'll each have our own opinion. Michael wouldn't let it go. In fact, if you don't like it, you can pack your things and leave. So you're gonna kick me out. What about our baby? I don't see a problem. Take it with you. I don't want anyone else's. What are you talking about? Like a parrot? A stranger is a stranger. Emily begged and sobbed loudly. He's your child. And that's the end of it. It's good to draw a line, isn't it? Nodded Michael. Now you can mimic it from my apartment. I'll be gone. But you'll regret it and you'll remember me. But it'll be too late. Good riddance. And bring the baby. With tears in her eyes, Emily began to swaddle her son. Michael stood aside and smirked. At this moment, he did not even feel the approaching boomerang of fate, enjoying the humiliation and suffering of his wife. It seemed to amuse and amused him, and give him confidence that he was doing the right thing. While collecting her son, Emily suddenly remembered her mother's words about something serious, and realized that again she had let everything pass her ears, and believed in her husband's brothels and speeches. His whole rotten being was on the surface. It was only necessary to shake it harder, so that the outside would sleep. But she didn't, and now she wished for her own fruits of carelessness. There was a little money left in her purse, and that was enough for her to take a cab to her mother's. Naturally, Camille welcomed her daughter and grandson with open arms, but she also read moral lectures. I warned you that this wouldn't end well. I even suggested you move in with me, at least for a while. Mom, that wouldn't have worked for me. He's gone off the rails. It's like he's been waiting for the right moment. I thought so too. And I still think he had a cunning plan. Camille shook her head. What was that about? Emily asked calmly. She had finally stopped crying. Yes, and that it wasn't for Ethan that your Michael renovated the nursery. And in general, lately he's been behaving strangely trusting and almost dusting you off. And since my son was born, he's been all over the place. At first I thought it was just emotion from worry. 
and we even made up afterwards. But it's only been a week, and it's happened again. I don't know what happened to him. Okay, I'm gonna take responsibility and tell it like it is. Your husband has another woman, and it's likely that she had a baby with him too. And he prepared this room for that child. I don't believe it. Mom, I don't believe it. Emily cried again, but this time from the realization that she had been told the real truth. After all, all signs converged, unexpected business trips, sudden spending of money, renovation of the children's room on her own initiative, and finally, the rejection of her own son. Calm down, daughter. What's to come is what's to go. I also at first believed in his sincerity, and then I began to suspect that he is not such a simple man. Slowly I looked closer, gathered information, analyzed and drew conclusions. She didn't tell me anything about it. Emily sighed heavily and looked at her with tearful eyes. I was afraid you'd misunderstand me and blame me for everything. My mother shrugged and cried too. And only now I realized that I should have told you everything at once. You wouldn't have had to go through all this and you wouldn't be crying in front of me now, but you would live in peace. What happened is what happened, mom but I still don't believe he did it for another family. What do you think? We'll see. Emily stayed with her because she had nowhere else to go. But at the same time, she filed for divorce. Michael received the official notice, but he didn't respond to it. And that said he had completely lost interest in her and his son. They ceased to exist for him, literally and figuratively. And after some time, without waiting for an official divorce, Michael struck a decisive and final blow to his wife's ego. As expected, he was really preparing to accept a new family, and soon a woman came to him with a small daughter. What is interesting is that it was from the same city where he had been traveling lately, ostensibly on business. In fact, Michael lived with three families, and he liked the second one better. Apparently, this woman treated him in a special way. And if it was for her that he took this step, after his divorce from his first wife, his reputation had been dealt a significant blow. But Michael mistakenly thought things would get better. However, soon there were financial problems, and he called his wife to return the jewelry given to him. Surprisingly, Emily agreed and came to the park to hand over the jewelry box. Take it. I don't need anything from you. I'm only here for a while to straighten things out, he said guiltily, lowering his head later. I'll get it all back. You'll see. Just don't tell anyone about this. I won't. I'm no longer interested in your fate. Emily cried. You've completely forgotten about your son, haven't you? I no longer ask to visit. At least just call and find out how he's doing. I haven't had time. I've had some problems, but things will get better soon. And I'll visit you if you'll let me. I doubt that very much. But you can see your son. And that was the end of it. And it's amazing that after what he did to her, she showed him mercy. She even let him see her son. Although, if you think about it, she could have closed all the doors. Apparently, a piece of pity in her soul still remained, and she remembered him for a long time. But they never saw each other again, and a whole year flew by unnoticed. By that time, Emily had already gotten used to living without her husband. All the more so because there was always a caring and loving grandmother nearby. Together, they managed not only to educate Ethan, but also to provide him with everything he needed. Emily did not sit idly by and also worked part-time and brought a substantial income to the general budget. It was quite good and enough for all the necessary expenses. They even managed to save for a rainy day, but fate took care of them and warded off storm clouds. What couldn't be said about the former taker he not only could not solve financial problems at the expense of his wife's jewelry, but also lost the last thing he had and above all the respect of close people. And his friends had stopped giving him a hand. And all because the boomerang of fate dropped him to the bottom of life. Michael couldn't cope with the oppressive pressure and fell into drunkenness. Naturally, his new wife left him and took his daughter. The apartment turned into a den and alcoholics from all over the neighborhood began to come there. He took a spare drink and sank to the bottom of life, lower and lower. He never even thought about the fact that he had a different life, for all the things he'd done. He had to answer bitterly and not only to be left without a family, but also to turn into an alcoholic.
the boomerang of faith was so powerful that it left no chance for salvation. Even his neighbors, with whom he was once friends, did not lend him a helping hand. They simply shied away and pretended not to notice. Emily soon found out about it too, naturally from her mother, but she was unwilling to visit him. By saying such words, he had set himself up and gotten what he feared so much. Indeed, Michael mocked those who for one reason or another were above her life. And when he himself got there, he felt all the delights of a worthless existence on his own skin. And in this he could only blame himself, because he did not value what he had. His wife calmly adapted to the new life, and did not worry about how her ex-husband. She realized that all this time she tolerated indifference and deceit, and did not even suspect what kind of person Michael really was. The lamentable outcome of their life together was an invaluable experience for Emily, and she learned from it certain lessons. However, she decided not to tie herself to new family ties for the time being. Their son was fine as it was, especially since grandmother was helping, and new life horizons awaited them ahead.